What's up guys, thanks for joining another episode of Cars, Bikes, and Coffee where we like to save and restore cars. I am Kurt and we are working on a 1974 260Z and today we are working on the rear suspension. We're making it to be a roller so we can get it to the body shop and get it completely painted. We've already painted the underside and have that already. So today we're gonna work on the rear suspension. Stay tuned. So we're going to start by installing the rear transverse link mounts and we're going to just bolt these up and get them hand tight and then we will torque them down once everything is connected. Now we're going to continue with the bottom of the transverse mount link and what we want to do, kind of want to angle it so you can feed the bolts through the back and get all those placed. Then you can feed flat washer and the lock washer. And we're gonna hand tighten these down. So here's the reason why we put the bolts in this position. If we didn't, this bolt, when we tighten up the transverse, it would run into this bolt. So now that we've placed them this way, we can bolt these up and get them set in. And now we're gonna put in the bottom mounts and this is just the bolt and a split locking washer and just get it threaded in just a little bit. And we're gonna do that for both sides. All right, so now we're going to get the bushings ready for the transverse rear suspension. And you have a short side and a long side and you'll note you have two short, two long sleeves and the bushings are two different sizes. There's a tall and a short. So we're gonna use two short for the short side and two tall for the long side. So now we'll get these all prepared with the grease and get them installed. Now we're gonna place our transverse link and feed the other bolt through. If you can have someone help you hold this, that would be very helpful or a stand. And one thing, if you don't have a helper, just as an example, you can still slide the transverse link out. So if you wanna put the new bushing and the pipe in all greased and ready to go, you can do that. And then we can grab the front mount and bolt that loosely up. And as we get ready to put the front mount in, just a tip, especially when you have painting underneath the vehicle, you know, these threads get paint in them or the undercoating. So you'll wanna at least either use a thread chaser or just run the bolt in by hand and then use a, either a socket or something to run the bolt in and then back out just to clean the threads. So we're gonna fit in our transverse link. Match it up to the front. And then we're gonna keep this hump. That's for the exhaust. That's gonna go on the driver's side. We're just gonna finger tight this bolt in. We're gonna leave just enough space for the other bushing so we can fit that in. Now that we have it all mounted, we're gonna go ahead and place on the transverse link bolts. And these as well, we're just gonna put in finger tight. Now we're going to go through and torque all our bolts, but we're going to leave the inner and outer transverse link bolts alone because we need to lower this and have load in the car to torque these to the correct specs. So now we're going to go ahead and assemble the rear hubs. And first thing we want to do is go ahead and get our bearings and our seal and also our grease. And then definitely recommend using a bearing seal and race driver set. And so what we're gonna do is take our grease and just fill it up in our hub on both sides. Next, we're gonna take our stub axle and apply grease on it. Then we're gonna go ahead and pack the bearings with grease as well. You'll note this has a flange and this outside of this flange goes towards the stub axle end and then place that down. And then we used a one and a half inch pipe here and this is actually conduit, but that'll work because we want it to fit on the inner flange of the bearing. 
and using our driver and suggestion, we're going to drive that bearing on. We're going to take our other bearing and we're going to pack this with grease. And now we're going to place the bearing in the rear of the hub. Now with our bearing in place and as flat as we can get it, we're going to take our driver and put it upside down. Use a piece that is smaller than the opening but can touch both sides. And we're going to just hammer it in. Next, we're going to grease the outer seal. We've greased the outer seal, now we're going to go ahead and press it in. And you'll want to make sure that there's grease inside this lip of the seal. Now we're going to flip the hub around. We're going to install the backing plate and install this so that this bracket is to the back of the vehicle. Now we're going to take the spacer and fit that onto the stub axle. Feed it from the back, apply a little grease to the end fitting. Press down, take our pipe, just gonna hammer this down. Take our flat washer, take our nut, thread it on. And then once we can't turn it anymore, we're gonna go ahead and put this on the car and then we'll torque these down. All right, off camera, we've gone and refurbished the fuel lines. You can see they came out awesome. So what we're gonna do is now connect the transverse link to the struts, and this is how we're gonna do it. The bushings, we already put two on the insides. With their thickness, it makes them too large. The strut will not fit. So what we need to do is take some calipers and we're gonna measure the distance that we need to sand these bushings down to, about one and a half millimeters. So we'll take three quarters of a millimeter off each side and then we'll try it again. We're gonna take our bushings and using a belt sander, we're gonna sand down the lip on both so we get the right thickness that will allow the strut to fit. Total lip is three and a quarter, so we want to bring this down to about two and a half. All right, so now that we've sanded them down, what we want to do is check. We've put them in, just dry fit, and now we get a perfect fit. So now we're going to take these out and grease them up and put in the other sides of the bushing. Now we're gonna lube these bushings as we have all the others. We're gonna put a thin layer on the outside, inner surface, making sure to keep our sanded bushings separate from our outside bushings. Thin layer on the inner pipe. And one thing you can do is just insert into one side, let's say your sanded side, into the pipe. Then you can keep them separate from your outside. I do highly recommend wearing a glove when doing this because this stuff is super sticky. And if you do get it on your hands, degreaser that's warm really helps to get it off. Now that we have all the bushings lubed, we're gonna take it to the transverse link. Now with our sanded bushings, I'm gonna go ahead and press them in. Being that the pipe is in, might take a little bit extra push. Now that we have the tubes in, we're just going to clean up our mess and the grease. And this time you can put a little bit of grease on the inside of the tubes. All right, so now that we have our pin lightly greased, before you place the pin in, you want to make sure that you have the right end in because this tapered side, which fits within the bolt here, is slightly off. It's not centered. So if I put this in like this, I would be off. I'd have to pull it out and do it all over again. So you want to make sure that you insert it in the correct way. Now we're going to start to insert the pin. We're going to use our old nut, fit it on the end of the pin and just line up the taper to be roughly on the side we need it on and we're gonna thread the nut on so it's just shy of the end of the pin. And then we're gonna use some persuasion to press the pin in. And now we have the pin in and we've locked two nuts on one side so that way when we put in this pin, we can line up the main pin and get it aligned so this will drop in. And you might have to just twist it back and forth. And as you can see, there we go. So now we'll go ahead and undo our nuts. 
and then we'll put in our washer, our lock washer. Now in this case, we might need to tighten it a little bit to bring that pin down. So we'll go ahead and do that. We're just gonna snug that up and then we'll back it off and place on the lock washer with the flat washer. And then when we're ready, we'll go ahead and torque this down. Now we need to get our washer on both sides and our nut. So now that we have the spindle pin in, we're going to go ahead and put our flat washer. And in this case, we're using a lock washer and then our nut. You can get a locking nut, of course, but in this case, we're gonna be using that. We're gonna go ahead and put those on both sides and tighten them down. Now in this case, since our primary focus is to make this a roller, we're gonna wait on installing the brake components. So we're gonna go ahead and put on the drum and then our wheels. All right, so we now have a roller. We've got the steering wheel in and the column keeps it on the lift, concrete, pro tip. Then we've got the steering rod in and bolted and torqued. We've got the steering rack ready. We've got these awesome Safari all-terrain, all-weather tires. <laughs> Just, I mean, those rims look sick. Might have to keep them, but we're, we'll get different wheels and tires. So this is just to make it roll through, so. There we go. All right, so we finished up the rear suspension. We now have a roller. So a couple things that we need to go back and do when it comes back. When we do the nuts on the stub axles, it's good to replace those. Actually, you should just replace with new ones. And because when you get it down to torque, you're gonna hammer in the ends to clamp down on the axle stub. So we have those on order. We need to get this out to the body shop. So we just use the old ones, which will be fun. Stay tuned for the next episode. We appreciate your guys' patience as we work through logistics. Follow me on Instagram at Cars, Bikes, and Coffee. A little behind the scenes and things I'm working on. So until then, we'll see you on the next one.